Uh, we're going to talk about recognition and badges. And there's my name and my Twitter handle, and there's more content, and, and there's the longer explanation of what we're talking about. What we're really talking about is recognition and how you can uh, build a culture of recognition inside your project, and where uh, other forms of recognition than badges or badges may be more or less appropriate. And um, how to grow your people. There's some badges. There we go. There's some old school badges. <laughs> Alright, uh, the thing about me is usually boring, but this is possibly relevant, so I'm going to go quickly. I'm Larissa. I work for Mozilla. I used to work for Internet Systems Consortium. This is my fourth bridge. I love open source. I mentor extensively. I love talking about mentoring. I'm uh, super committed to building diversity in open source. Um, and I am also super committed to building a culture of recognition. And what I mean by that is one where we see each other and each other's strengths and value them and talk about them and respect how people want to be recognized. And I think that that builds the kind of community that we want. Uh, and now it's time for the late afternoon wake up. We're all going to stand up because it's spectrogram time and I need it sparkly and exciting. So, we don't expect you to have a question about No idea. Everybody stand up and go to that end of the room. Go over there. Everybody go over there. Should I push my coffee down? Uh, sure. Yeah. You can. Is it a thing that can't be done with coffee? Um, wait, any points? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hang on. Great. Sorry. My speaker notes were missing. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So I'm going to ask you a question. And if you agree with the question really strongly, you're going to come all the way over to this wall. I made a statement. I'm going to read your statement. And you're, you're going to say, sort of, I agree strongly, you're going to hit the wall. I disagree strongly, you're going to hit the wall. I have some other opinion, you're going to put yourself in the middle. My way hurts scale. That's right. <laughs> okay. And uh, the first one is kind of easy. And don't, you know, if you, if you feel like staying on the wall, please don't think I'm going to judge you. I am having a great time at Open Source Bridge. Which is great. Oh, right. It's really great to go there. Cool. I'm really glad to hear people are having a great time at Open Source Bridge. Um, tell me, somebody tell me one thing that's making you feel awesome about Bridge or wants to be able to put you there. I have a lot of friends here. Um, I've made a lot of friends, guys. Wow. <laughs> One more. There are people who aren't on my project here. <laughs> oh, all the answers. Okay. We're going to go with one that's not quite as simple. I find. Just doing a spectrum round, which means I'm going to make a statement, and if you strongly agree with it, you hit this wall, and if you strongly disagree, you hit that wall, and if you feel differently, you go in the middle. Okay. Okay? Here's the statement I find t shirts. Highly motivating, personally, highly motivating. T-shirts? Yes. I Wait, find t-shirts highly really motivating. Over there. Do people really like t-shirts that much, or am no, I indicating you're, my you're, you're, you're saying I love t-shirts okay. if you're over here. If you get, if you know you're going to get a t-shirt, you feel super motivated to contribute, or if you, when you get a t-shirt, you feel super recognized, you would be over How here. How cool is a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. I have a little slice. <laughs> So somebody tell me why you are where you are. Tell me how you feel about t-shirts. Memories. Memories. Okay, I actually love that. Uh, middle, in the middle person. Memories and pride in your contributions. Fantastic. Somebody who's at the wall. Yeah. I hate t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I hate t-shirts that say things on them. I never wear them, except if I'm running. And even then, like I'd rather wear exercise clothing. Like I, I just I can't. I agree with this. I don't wear t-shirts. Like very rarely wear them. Very rarely. And it feels sometimes like if I'm not wearing them, then I, then I, I feel like pressured. Like I don't have enough team morale. You, you have to show more flair. If I were to lose my career, I think it would be right here because I'm stuck between memories and the fact that I never wear t-shirts. So I have this giant drawer of t-shirts. 
Okay, uh, next question. I don't like to be acknowledged in public. Also, you don't have to answer it like it's you. If you would rather just answer it like a theoretical, so that's fine. Yeah. If you'd like to be acknowledged in public over there. <laughs> yes. No, so if you'd like to be if you like to be acknowledged in public. I don't, yeah, I don't like to be acknowledged in public. So if you don't like to be acknowledged in public, go over here, and if you do, go over there. <laughs> and I just realized I should have probably phrased this in a different way. Like, we're going to have to like, help themselves about how they feel about being acknowledged in public. No, for later. Okay. Somebody uh, who hasn't said anything yet. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's right. Right. Somebody you are where you are. For a volunteer from over here, but don't make the people over there so we can go. Here we go. <laughs> Somebody tell me, tell me why you are where you are. It's a little awkward, but it means that I probably did something good. I mean, assuming that it's acknowledgement mm -hmm. for something that's good. Yes, it's for something good. <laughs> yeah, it shows that what you did had an impact, enough of an impact for someone to want to know about you. Um, all right. Here is another one. I like to earn badges, and I think they help people see what I know how to do. Is that a yes? Yeah, it's a two-parter, and this is a yes. Yes, I like to earn badges, and I think that they help people see you know, what I know how to do. What's a badge? <laughs> that's a great Figures. question. So we can talk about that. OK. Um, and that's the, that tells me something about what we should talk about next. Uh, unless you mean like, the silver ones pointed stars and you can carry a gun and <laughs> That would be awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome? This would be so awesome. All right, I have one more. My open source projects recognize our contributors effectively. Agree if you agree, agree, if your open source project is awesome at recognition, go there. If your open source project doesn't know how to recognize its contributors or just doesn't do it, go there. And a lot of you are in the middle. Well, yeah, and some of you are, are feeling like you don't know how to do it, and nobody is against this one. It's just not surprising. And lots of middle. And people on my project seem to be in the middle. <laughs> um, okay. So, again, I have a bonus question. How many people don't know what open badges are? Okay. So we'll talk a little about that. Um, Check it out. Here, right, so you can all sit down. Thank you for playing. You're awesome for playing along with me. And um, what do we win? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you you a ticket to the party. Yes, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love to give away things that were already free. That's my secret. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were dressed in every attendee. <laughs> yes, you Firefox. You win Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my joke. You mean, you mean like the project? No, you don't want that. You're now in charge. <laughs> You're now in charge. That's not I'll a gift, Master. Okay, so, um, badges. Um, so what we actually mean, so before we get into this, that, what badges actually means is the, so there's a bunch of different implementations of this, but Mozilla has a project called Open Badges, which is a thing where you have a specific, you have a database of achievable milestones represented by an image, which looks like a badge, like a scouting badge. Um, and there is a rubric, so you have done a thing or been to a thing, and you earn a badge. And within a given community of people, this means something. And um, so it's a defined set of skills or activities to be completed or what you have completed. And we publicly, within this community, demonstrate what you've learned or done, right? And a way to organize and count contributions and contributors. This is actually where I think badges are awesome. Um, if you use badges and say, like in our in our project, um, one project that uses badges a lot is the support organization, which is a totally volunteer driven support organization. And people, I don't know, they answer a hundred tweets, get a lot of support over tweets, and they get a badge. And then we know we can count, and we're like, oh, we have three thousand people who've answered over a hundred tweets. That's great to know, right? Do I think, though, that those people feel really awesome because they got that badge? Maybe, but I think there's probably other things that make them feel even more awesome. So I hypothesize that badges are not necessarily a primary recognition form. I think there are other stuff, but I think people often think they're like an amazing recognition form. So this is sort of my hypothesis. Um, what I feel recognition is, is how we let each other know that we see the good work 
I see you over there reviewing tons and tons of crappy code and being really honest awesome about it. I, I see that you went to hackathons where you stayed up all night putting that mobile app into Indian languages, right? Um, and I think it's also we learn more about each other. Like, it went in order to recognize someone well. I think you need to know something about them, and you need to like have talked to them or seen what they're doing, which makes recognition a little bit hard to steal. But at the same time, I think it's how we build community because that's what we do, right? We see each other, and um, so I think it's a culture. I think um, what I want to do in the projects that I work on is build a culture of recognition, where it's just something we do all the time, right? So we appreciate each other all the time because. All of us, whether we're paid to work on open source, or volunteer to work on open source, or we're a student and we're working on open source, all of us are giving a lot. We're giving a lot. Um, so I want to talk a little bit, and maybe it will take five minutes, or maybe it will take less, depending on what you all have to say, about how you like to be recognized, and how your project recognizes. And I want you to just find someone and talk for a few minutes, and then share back about what you come up with. Like, what, what is your project currently doing to recognize people? And how do you think you would feel really good if you're working on a project and someone did something for you that maybe you haven't had done before? Like, what would that be?
Well, I think a person can award a badge, but I don't think a machine can award a badge and therefore recognize them. Interesting. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you about that. I don't think, though, that badges can't be automated. I just think that automated badges are not to be confused with personal recognition. Right? Um, they're different things. Badges are super valuable. My, so you missed my hypothesis. My hypothesis is that badges are not recognized. But there is recognition and there is badges and there is an intersection, but mostly there are different things. It's okay. Don't you apologize. Um, and you don't and you don't even agree either. <laughs> um, all right, what else? Yeah. So a worker lists all the uh, people who contributed to his uh, nonprofit on a page with a picture and a bio and what the contribution was and he says that it's especially important to list uh, not only top like leadership people, but also all contributors when that's possible. Um, and also uh, 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 seek out money to, to fund the travel to our events. I, I think that's awesome. I think giving people bios online if they want that and sending people to events are amazing. Yeah. Okay. 
And um, one of the things we're talking about is that people like to recognize the different ways. Some people are happy to be kind of called out in a room full of hundreds of people and say this is a lot, but some people, they just want their brain to open up. Some people like being on the websites or being emails. Everybody's different about how they feel about being I really struggle with being. Yes. Um, and that personal recognition specifically from someone you respect and not from just a generic supervisor or someone who has the job of recognizing people. Um, that can be an empty, but if you were someone that means Which is super hard scale, right? Um, so I wanna from the top especially. Yeah. So um, I get a lot of feedback that one of the things people really love is LinkedIn recommendations. And um, so, I, and especially from someone like a mentor, something someone who really knows them and seen what they do, and I try to recommend that especially to that. Um, you talked about cleaning that culture of recognition at one computer, so like having computers recognize each other, and so like, again, like if I'm making the top, like everybody's saying the job is really good. The other thing we talked about is the best piece of for me, our men was a little deeper on snacks. Oh, I want to read the socks are so good. I should do socks to this conference. But they're socks. Yeah. It's a really great piece of swag because I wear them yeah. all the time. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the reasons I put teachers in there is I like people to think about this. Um, a lot of women especially don't like getting t shirts because they don't wear them. And so it feels like Frustrating. So socks. We started giving away socks a lot at the little events, and we think socks are awesome. <laughs> so, um, uh, yes. So, so, if I may follow up on the please. socks as swag. Yes. Yes. Um, I contribute to my alma mater, and they give me swag things every once in a while. And you know, sometimes it's a nice little pen. Sometimes it's this laser pointer thing. But the thing that I really like, the swag that I really like the most is luggage tag. Not which is the name of the school that I'm excited. Uh, it's yeah, a, a stinking luggage tag. <laughs> right, it's probably the cheapest swag that you can ever. Why do you love it? I, I like it because um, well, it's practical because it helps me find my luggage. Because it's a unique color, it's not a beige. And it uh, lets me advertise that I'm in this tribe that yes. went to this school. Mm -hmm. right? So it's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm part of this crowd. Ha ha ha. I totally, I think that's one of the things that's cool about swag. Swag has pluses and minuses, but it, it reinforces a cultural identity, right? And that's kind of awesome. Um, I, I wanted to touch back on someone said something about how important it is to know how people want to be recognized. So, and then someone else said earlier that if you just ask people how you want to be recognized, that's kind of a hard question. Um, so we have at, at Mozilla we have Mozillians, which is like a directory of people. Not every not every project has this, but if you don't have this, you can use another method. We're adding a field for documenting how people like to be recognized, and we're actually trying to figure out how to document that because we just ask people how do you like to be recognized, they might be like. Oh. You're asking me, what's that mean? Um, so we're thinking about that. But I think, and then we're going to really encourage everybody who spends time recognizing contributors to check. Because we've actually recognized people in ways that we didn't appreciate before, accidentally. Um, and I think that's problematic. Um, that's why I put here um, check in with people to document. And also just the learning and equity, how people want to recognize and scale as part. Because we have thousands, even, of contributors. You know, when you have five, I worked on a project where I had five, and I can pretty much remember, you know, Fred likes to come to events, and Louise can never come to events, but she really likes magnets. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and Floyd likes to come to cookies, and there's only five of them, and he was in my cap, so I can take But that's not going to work when you have, like, we're trying to 10x our contributors right now, that's 10,000 people. Oh. So, uh, the last thing I hear is creative. Are there more creative ideas we want to surface now? And then I wanted to show you a couple of creative ideas that I really love. And then we can talk more about that. Yeah. yeah. I guess this kind of fits in the um, I, since I think I'll agree with people that uh, Denise has talked about or something they do that I would love. I was mad that they were Yeah. Um, they do, uh, instead of um, chain talks, for each release they do uh, code stories, which is essentially change logs but in prose format. So instead of just like some cryptic line with a, with a GitHub handle, it's you know, uh, 
uh, Jenny Smith made it to fix the problem with the login form that uh, made break on every other Tuesday. And so they get a full name recognition in the Um Can I share one that I just remembered? So I was just, I I just came from India and I was at a contributor event and we had this session around uh, user-centered design and we came up, we were coming up with apps. And this one guy came up with a recognition app that would be like Bitstrips. Do you guys know Bitstrips? You can make a comic strip and then you can post it to a social media thing and it's got little figurines and you can make them say stuff. So he was like, we could make Bitstrips that are like a person and they're like, hey, I just fixed four bugs in I'm going to use Firefox example, let's use Firefox example, in Firefox that help you browse the web privately. So it would sort of level up the contribution into a thing that everybody would understand, and then would be a way that you could sort of put that out there publicly, and people could recognize and acknowledge you, and it's fun. And then at the end it would be like, you can do it too. So it's like fun, recognition, and then reinforces the community because it lets people join. I was like, that is cool. So we haven't made it yet. It sounds kind of hard, but I think it would be able to Anyway, uh, other creative moments? Yeah. Well, just from this discussion, I realized that uh, the GNOME Foundation has about like, 300 members. And like, I'm looking at our membership page, and it just says, these are the people who are GNOME Foundation members. This is an opportunity for us to say thank you to all these people who make contributions, and therefore they are Foundation members. Yes. So we turn the membership page into I think that's an awesome idea. And I think I, I want to make a thing where we can use our membership directory as a way to thank people, like where people can send each other things or something. And also, we do some other things that are pretty simple, like when people commit code for the first time and it gets into Firefox, we actually have a list that will go up on the project meeting. We can download that list, and we'll just tell you, you know, these are the 20 people who committed for the first time, like out loud in the project call in front of everyone and the CEO and everyone else. So, that kind of makes me feel pretty good. Um, but we also have been getting kind of wacky at Mozilla and creative, and I want to show you crafty recognition. So we started thinking about, this came from an idea of a non-coding contribution and a sort of maker culture building idea and turned into a recognition idea. Originally we were like, what if we developed crafting Mozilla projects? That would be awesome, right? And then we were like, what do we do with it? We're make all this stuff. And, like we'll use it to recognize computers. So it's taking off, and this is so this is Diwanchi. She's a friend of mine in India, and I saw her this weekend, and she said I could do a picture. And uh, she made these awesome bags, which she then gave to me and my colleague David as recognition of our support of the project. We're totally cute. That's why I'm doing. She just gave them these weekend. This is why I'm using this example. But she is doing groups in her community with people who craft and sort of getting them turned on to open source and Mozilla for crafting and then leading them into more technical stuff and using the crafts to recognize other contributors in the community. I think this is a totally amazing combination of things that ends up in recognition. It's kind of blue my it's like you are so awesome. And it's happening in other contexts too. Uh, this is a scarf knitted by one of our DBAs for the ministry. And it's knitted in a Fibonacci sequence, which kind of blew my mind. <laughs> but, but, anyway, she usually has a pattern which I can find online and share with people. That's a scarf. And she knitted it for the guy who guessed when we would hit the millionth Godzilla bug. We had a contest to recognize the contributor who guessed when we would hit the millionth Godzilla bug. And then a member of our community knitted him a Fibonacci sequence scarf. So this is way out there in the creative recognition land. But I just wanted to like give you some ideas. Um, and then I wanted to sort of bring it back around the badges a little bit. We're talking about recognition and all these sort of out there kinds of recognition. And um, I tried to like think about badges versus recognition. And I made this weird and correct this. Uh, my idea is that recognition takes a person's individual talents and skills into account and is personal, right? Badges recognize specific skills and activities within a context, but they're not necessarily personal. If a specific person issues a badge and they tell you why, that might kind of fit both. Badges, though, identify specific rubric-based skill sets in a community. And so I think badges are really high value and recognition is really high value. I just, I'm finding increasingly in 
both our projects and other projects, I see them being conflated a lot. So I'm trying to sort of tease them apart a little bit. So these are both high value things. Also, I think you can achieve the same goals that you would achieve with, in my, to my mind, badges in a lot of ways. So you can choose whether badges are the thing for you. Do you guys have experience with badges? Good, bad questions about badges? Things we could talk about? So, I mean, um, in the Lead Office project, um, I had a, we thought about using different methods that we have uh, different ways of recognizing contributions. Yeah. Uh, the question is, um, with a number of different activities, it seems, um, you know, what's the overhead of setting up the badge system and trying to actually look, take that in? Because, you know, lines of German common translator or something is much easier to ascertain than, you know, how many difficult bugs have you um, you know, done regression testing on to figure out which commit. Yes, yes. one of those had a subjective term in it, difficult. Yeah. Right? That kind of thing is harder to automate. Right? Um, whereas lines of X is easy. We have this, we have something like this because we're trying to, we have this big goal this year around active contributors. We're trying to make definitions of active, and uh, some people are coming up with objective definitions, and some people are coming up with subjective definitions, and some people are coming up with both. And it's very interesting to try to automate this kind of thing. And um, it's challenging. But at the same time, if we want to scale, we can do it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What makes your work about the project be really good for hard skills and like your job as well? So, like, I could write that I'm an expert in, let's say, CSS on LinkedIn. And no one is going to, any of this type of pluses on LinkedIn, but like, like, 55 people have said that I'm good at library, <laughs> which, like, this really You are good at library. I'm good at library. <laughs> but, like, um, and then they're without me. But, like, if I had a bad opinion, because I worked with him, and it was issued by him, and it said, Jimmy, there's going to be success, and then I could point to it. So it's very good for people who, are, who you know, and I know that people love to do it. With why they lost the program. So for the very legitimate reason, it's the skills that you helped up on the job. Um, and I think this might be very nicely even if it's sort of the slideshow. But, um, but yeah, I think that I think that we were talking about how badging is really good for sort of harder skills that you want to prove to other people. I'm not sure whether I can actually do this because it doesn't seem to want to. Uh, I was gonna demo this thing for you. Um, we, uh, but I. Yeah. I get a, get a blue screen instead of the... Maybe that's what I'm looking for. Monitor settings. See if you have a second page. Just put a second monitor set up. Yeah, I'm going to check right now. Um, so I'll, I'll talk for a second here. Vamping. So what I was going to talk about is how I agree. Badges are an awesome recognition of specific skills. Um, and can also be a recognition that an organization sort of blesses your skill set. So if someone, say, in our context, goes through the WebMaker online training and works with a WebMaker mentor, and this person's like, yeah, this person totally knows this whole, this whole toolkit. They know all these tools. They know how to teach this stuff. You are a WebMaker mentor. Stand. You have a badge. That could actually mean something. Um, and, that, and that is a really awesome and useful use of badging. I just want to make, I wanted to talk about it not being the same, and I'm just going to say Gather windows. Just gathered it to the other side. I just gathered it to the other side. And you talked about something that happens in my community where we have a stack overflow calls. Please talk about that. And then I'll, yeah. I'll explain that. Under the Apple, Apple menu, select system preferences. Yeah, I did that. Oh, anything? So in the Stack Overflow code, it runs on OSQA. Mm -hmm. And there are badges, and the younger members of the community want to get all of the badges. Yeah. They're typically about like 13, 14 years old, and they, they like the badges. The older people are not terribly interested in them. That's just something that's happened with us. Mm -hmm. Yes. I definitely find that there is there are demographics who are interested in gamification in general, and their demographics were like, ah, what is, why is this fun? And there is an age aspect to it. Um, 
uh, not to overgeneralize because I'm sure that there are people outside of the embryonic who like education. But yes. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing that just now in custody. Do we know whether it's a generational effect that the 13 and 15 year olds, when they become 15 and 16 and 17 and 18, are still like matches? Do we want to get into the data of the time? There is, so um, our Open Bags program has recently split into two. It, 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 it merged and bred and split up. And um, one of them is implementing that stuff to build out our which is a badge system for Mozilla. The other one is has moved to a sort of a spin-off nonprofit affiliated to that called the Badge Alliance. And they're doing research about behavior and badges. So the Badge Alliance website might have information about that. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, that same group of folks did this thing, which I cannot demo because what well, they're gonna go wrong. And I'm just gonna tell you about it and I'm gonna give you the URL. Um, so this is a, what I consider a really amazing use of the badges concept. Um, Basically, the idea is it was started as a way to help people visualize how they would get into a career, but we are now maintaining that this is also a way to help people visualize their track through open source contribution. Um, you have sort of example pathways. You have like, this person is a, um, I don't know, a Linux kernel um, committer. This person is a webmaker mentor. This person is a, you know, successful marketing specialist and I don't know, documentation. You have a whole bunch of different jobs and then people have thought through and made into badges different important aspects of learning that how you would get there. And then we're talking them to specific things people could do and achieve within the community, right? So um do <laughs> like Girl Scout, like Scout badges and it's like specific stuff. So um you know, successfully did your first um, poll request. Success, small thing, bigger thing. Successfully localized five documents into Urdu. I don't know, making this up. Um, and and then they build on each other, and you can get to a to a level, and you can see other people's progressions that they've already been to, either real or we have some fictionalized ones too. We have both. Um, and the idea here is that we can help people take badges and build their own progression. And it could work for um, careers, if they use it for careers, and it could also work for the project. So the link for that, can, can I not even display my slides now? Oh, ah, it's back. So, um, I can't, uh, I think I could show you this, but you should check it out. Discovery.openbadges.org is really cool. And um, it's new, but what we're, what we're looking at definitely making it you know, so that people can just implement it on your own um, space. And I think it should be, to my mind, this is a great use of that. It's not a personal recognition tool, which is the other piece of the side, which I think we absolutely all must do. But it is a way to um, clarify specific skill sets and help people visualize them and document them. I think it's really useful for that. Um, so I just wanted to give you some more resources about this stuff. Um, so one of those is our recognition toolkit, which you can check out, which Jenny worked on, um, and has a lot of different ways that we're recognizing, from swag to events to being in the credits in Firefox to being on our monument. We built this. Should put a picture of it next. We built this thing. It's like a statue. It's got the names of all of our contributors on it. Thousands of names of people. And it's on the market era in San Francisco where you drive by. It's pretty fun. But a couple people got on there who didn't want to be on there, so don't forget to check with people. Um, also, someone's on there twice. We don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> but it's really awesome. Um, and it's, and the, um, the badge kit.org there is a really easy way to make badges and try out badging. Um, discovery, I just talked about. Um, and then there's a blog about all the different kinds of crafting projects that we're doing. I can share this, the slides will be online. The other thing that I didn't talk about, but this is a great example of it, is we like to do contributor stories, and we talked a little bit about this. This one's Mench of the Month from our Web Explorer project, and they were really, they did a really great job with it because they were very witty. Um, but you can do all sorts of things, and we have a newsletter that goes out every two weeks where we talk about a contributor, and we interview them, and we talk about 
what they're doing and a little bit about their personal life if they want. And it's, um, I think it's both good recognition for them and also motivating and inspiring for other people because maybe they can't imagine how they would get to be someone whose code is actually in this project that they aspire to when they're this person and then they might see an example of a similar person. So it's both uh, motivating for the person who gets recognized and for other people to do those kinds of stories and get them out there. I think a lot of us do that. That's a, that's a pretty good strategy. Uh, then I just, this is just me. And then we can do more discussion here at the end. I, I was, I'm sad that I couldn't show you that that just came out with my big um, Anyway, that's my contact information. And you want to play with it? I can't make it work, but we can try. Um, here. Can you do find like a mirror of screens? Yeah, that's what I thought I had, but I don't have it. I just want to move it there. Yeah. Oh, like just drag it over. Try going to the right. I think it would be right instead of left. You can also. Oh. Ah! Ah! This is Sarah. She's my FW intern and she's the best. <laughs> Sarah. Yeah, she's getting her master's in gamification. I should have had her clue this one. Oh, look. Well, this is embarrassing. Um, no, there you go. Okay, so. Um, now I don't know how I'm going to drive it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to let you do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. You should have to make the windows so much. Yeah, but it's not showing. See, it's not mirroring. It's just showing the. There we go. So scroll down a little bit to where we can see the. Um, yeah. So you see how you've got different, um, different pathways? Some of these are like careers that are. Thing like what we're talking about, like a career person, a little bigger mentor, and then if you click on them, um, yeah, you get different experiences. This one's goofy, but okay, whatever. So he, he talks about like what he does, right? And then what we did here is to badge five, for lack of a better word, um, skills that you obtain. And these are, this is a prototype, so some of these are a little but you can see like different things he did. And some of them are like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, and what's a loose mongoose? This is silly. So, um, so okay, this might not be the best example. <laughs> but um, apparently, apparently Matt is a wacky guy. So, um, this is really nice. <laughs> I'm just not going to work if you there. Okay, um, uh, Sarah, are you in? Do you have one? Yeah, I do. Oh, <laughs> live demo, it's not going well. I suppose it's absolutely. It is, uh, totally yeah. appropriate. Sarah's working on badges, that was a little better research. So the idea of this tool is that we can have badge experiences and skill set obtaining events that people can then pull together into a pathway for themselves. So it's going to take us a little while to get there, but the idea, and you could do it across different parts of the project. Like, if you're going to be a, um, I don't know, a localization master, and you're like a lot of people who do, there you go, so, so this is about an actual person, the event of account manager at Mozilla. She does she works in Firefox OS. Um, and she, I don't know what this means. <laughs> kangaroo, rabbit. <laughs> it does? Oh, so okay, if you click on them, it tells you what these things do. Oh. I knew that, but I had never put them there. So they, um, yeah, they mean things that are you're good at or represent you, and then generally there will be like a way you get this thing, right? And people talk about, people go through their, there you go, diversity advocate. You advocate for more diversity in tech by empowering minorities. To get this badge, you need to do these things. And we have, and so the idea here is to um, use badges as a way to help other people visualize their path forward, right? Like, I don't know how to get to be like you, person, and I don't know what the things I would need to do to do that are. And it's supposed to break them down for you and make it attainable. That's the idea. Yeah, time. All right. Uh, thanks. And I'm going to hang out for a little bit. And uh, yeah.
Yeah, feel free to hit me up anytime. These will be online and my contact information is there.